Gallo. Welcome, Welcome to the, the show. show. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm Yana Didash, and this is how the seniors prepared for Spirit Week. I love helping out the seniors. I think it's. Um, you should send the grade out with a bang. Make sure they have a memorable year before they go off into the real world or college or wherever life takes them. We're hanging up the signs for Spirit Week and getting our hall fancy. <laughs> what does Spirit Week mean to you? It's my school pride just coming out of me. Just everything. I really like Spirit Week just because it's a time to be really creative and just have school pride and it kind of like gives you an excuse to be extra. It's just nice working with people who like are like passionate about like being Spirit Week, and then I also just love just hanging up like the decorations and seeing it all being put together at the end. It's really nice. I also like the Star Wars stickers. I hung I think almost all of them up. They're just randomly all over the place. Thank you. Howdy. Today we're interviewing Chris. <laughs> Howdy. You were in frame. Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> yeah. About to die. Today we're interviewing Grace Raymond on her expectations versus reality of her senior pictures. We're also interviewing her about being an ambassador for her photographer and also an intern. My name's Grace Raymond, and I had my photos done by Ashley Nicole. Okay. <laughs> what were your expectations going into it? Um, uh, my expectations were that they are going to be as good and creative as you want them to be. So if you're going to put in the work to make them creative by like communicating to the photographer what you want and like what your style is, then that's pretty much what you're going to get. What was the reality of your pictures in your session that you had? So mine ended up going a little crazy, so you got to be, be be prepared for like anything so I wanted to do mine to make it look like I was somewhere tropical so I chose the Cleveland Zoo because they have a like rainforest room and um, typically because I've been there a few times like nobody's really there like it's kind of chill and empty and I got there and there was like a crazy long line of people and I like asked the lady at the ticket window I was like what's going on and she told me that there was a flower that only blooms for one day every seven years and it bloomed that day so a ton of people came to see it and um, I was a little little upset because the line was two hours long outside and then two, along, two hours long inside <laughs> so I was waiting four hours just to get in there to take my pictures but um, I, ha I thought it was going to be like a little flower and it ended up being a seven foot tall flower that smelled like rotting flesh. So 
working around that and making sure that I made the right facial expressions, even though it smelled awful all around me, was a little crazy, something I didn't prepare for. <laughs> so. Would you recommend going to your photographer? Oh, absolutely. Ashley Nicole is really awesome, not just with like her quality of the pictures she takes, but with the way she works with you and how your session goes. Like she really is open-minded when it comes to like giving you exactly what you want. So like I said about communicating, like if you communicate an idea to her, she's going to make it happen. Like and she just has amazing quality. That's good. <laughs> And then, did you think her prices were reasonable? Yeah, you definitely get what you pay for, like most things, but I would say like photography is definitely one of those kinds because like obviously the equipment and the time that she's putting into it, like example for mine, like we went there with the expectations to have an hour shoot inside of a rainforest and it turned into a five hour long shoot. So like finding the right photographer even if they're expensive is definitely going to be worth it just because of you're going to have those pictures forever and they're going to be nice. You're an ambassador for her so do you want to tell us what it's like to be an ambassador? Yeah so I started in the spring and we did a spring shoot and then we had a summer shoot then my senior pictures and then a fall shoot and then we're going to do a winter shoot and basically um I'm paying for my senior pictures and then I get the other shoots for free but I post about them and just kind of represent her and what her company is and I just advertise for her. Most photographers will do ambassador ambassadors so like they'll have them. Um, you kind of have to like look to apply for it. Like in my case um, she DM'd me on Instagram and asked me to apply for it and then you go through like an application process and everything but that brought like a lot of good things because I made a lot of friends from the program and then she asked me to be her intern as well so now I'm a part of an internship for her so being an ambassador was like a really cool experience and something that I definitely don't regret doing. This next story is featuring senior captain Nick Crawford and his thoughts on his last high school football game. It's Senior Night in Cardinal Country. Please welcome your 2019 Panthers Cardinals. We're preparing for the last game just like we would any other game, you know. But we're just we're doing with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. Uh, it means a lot, you know. It's gonna be kind of sad. They're our last football game playing together. You know, we started when we were really young at Little Cards. So it's gonna be kind of emotional. Boardman, it's around 224, and we like to, we own that <laughs> No, we don't own that <laughs> We pull in week 10, but this year we're playing Boardman, and they're also on 224, so we're gonna win. The last game. Win. <laughs> like to think, wow, Little Nick really enjoyed his high school football days. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. They're great. Hi, I'm Kaylin Cleveland, a senior here at Kingfield High School. And I'm Aaliyah Zolden, a senior here as well. We are going to be doing a section of the show where we're asking other seniors and some staff members about the process for applying to colleges, and they're going to give some advice for upcoming seniors applying to college as well. We hope you enjoy. I'm Dr. H. I'm a counselor for students in the high school who are sophomores through seniors and who, um, whose last names begin with A through K. I think there's a lot of stress on seniors just because it's senior year and then you add the college application process and it like doubles mm -hmm. what's going on. 
Um, for kids who have already decided where they're applying, it's a little less stressful because they're going through the application process and that takes some time and energy, but they've already kind of made a decision as to what their top school or two are, so um, they're a little ahead of the curve. I think for kids who don't really know yet what mm -hmm. they're applying for or where they want to try to get into school, it's even more stressful because they're making that decision at the same time they're having to go ahead and file the application. Yes. Common App has really changed the game for colleges because it allows students to um, fill out all the information needed one time and then they can choose where they want to submit that to. I'll tell you, just in the guidance office it's changed a lot in the last five or six years. Um, Common App's been around that long but it wasn't that utilized and so we used to have to for every student copy you know make a paper copy of their transcript and mail it to each school that they were applying to now students apply online and they can select schools that, that accept the common app and not everyone does um, but for those schools that accept it they can mark those as um, places they want to apply to and much more easily submit those applications so one thing that i see happening is kids are applying to a lot more schools it still costs money to apply, yeah. but um, because it's become easier, instead of picking maybe in the past four schools that they were applying to, yeah. now it's not uncommon to see eight or ten, and I've seen twenty, twenty-five. Yeah. Um, I think that makes it more difficult for kids because then they have to, after the fact, still whittle down that list of yeah. who's going to take me you know, financially, what are they going to be able to give to me, and where am I going to end up going. Mm -hmm. So it's helped with a lot of things, but I think it's also made some decisions a little more difficult because it's become easier to apply. Well, our current juniors should be okay. starting now to think about the process so they're not caught in next fall with um, yeah. all of those same questions that a lot of the seniors are now. So, um, for example, spring break is a great time to do some visits rather than, you know, a, a party vacation. Um, if you can think about maybe using that time with family to look over some of the schools that you might be interested in, that's a great time to get on some campuses. Um, even if you're not traveling, that's a great time to start doing some homework, you know, and looking online at schools and who offers which programs. Um, what, what size school do I want to go to, what type of school do I want to be in an urban environment or a campus that's a little more out there. You can't tell that until you get on some campuses and, and start to look at them. So spring break is a good time to start doing that. Um, obviously kids can take time off school to go on, on school visits if they choose to do that. We're okay with that. Um, so just to start the process by spring. Yeah. I'm Nick Crawford. I'm a senior. I committed to Kent State for wrestling, then I decommitted, and I'm looking to play football somewhere. Um, so, what would you say, like, the recruiting process was like for you? Was it, like, challenging, or did you feel, like, more stressed out than, say, if you had to apply to colleges? I mean, I feel like if I had applied to colleges not playing a sport, it would have been harder. Playing a sport, I think, made it easier because it gave me yeah, colleges coming at me instead of me going to them. Yeah. What's your advice for upcoming, like seniors that are like playing sports like you and like for getting into college and stuff like that and getting recruited. To play a sport I'd say start filling out uh, recruiting forms as soon as possible. Get your name out there. Um, and you said you decommitted. Correct. So how, like why did you do that? I just decided that I don't want to wrestle in college. I want to play football. It make me happy. Alright, thank you. That's it. I'm Zach Russo. I'm a senior at Camford High School. How many colleges have you applied to so far? Um, I just applied today. I applied to Miami of Ohio and Kent State. What has been the hardest part about applying to colleges? Uh, definitely the Common App personal essay, just because um, schools don't like certain schools don't take your writing ACT score, so it's your only writing reflection we'll see of yours. So um, just make sure that's good and it's a true reflection of who you are as a person, because that's the only um, insight they'll get other than your scores. Okay. Do you have any advice for upcoming students? Probably just start as early as you can. I know like it gets stressful when it's this time because I know like a lot of us early actions doing like two weeks, doing like two weeks. So I'm um, just getting everything done like even in August if you can. All right. Thank you very much. Kate Ross and I'm a senior at Canfield. How many colleges have you applied to? Um, I'd say roughly like 15, 20 ish. I mean, I don't, yeah, 15. Probably. What do you think the hardest part about applying to colleges has been for you? 
applying like the hardest part yeah. definitely like the supplemental essays because you have the personal essay for your comment app plus a lot of colleges require like you to write a couple of additional essays and they're like it's a lot it's lengthy okay do you have any advice for upcoming students um don't just wait till two weeks before your deadlines like i did um i would say start when the comment app opens because like then you have like months to prepare and like definitely turn your transcript papers in more than a week before like I did so I don't know just be scheduling everything out and like don't evenly space it I'd say all right thank you very awesome. much thank you okay I'm Grace Mangapora I'm a senior and I committed to Indiana University of Pennsylvania to play volleyball um did you have to like apply there or how did you do that for sports did they just come and watch you or? Um, the way it worked was I went to their camp and I talked to him a little bit before because he watched me play at a tournament. So I went to their camp and he set up an admissions meeting for me there and I just went in. I did like an application and they accepted me like right then and there. Mm -hmm. And then after like a couple weeks later I committed. So would you say it was it's like less stressful than having to apply to college or because you had to like work hard in volleyball and everything like more stressful like what is your take on anything it's it was very stressful because when I didn't know where I was going and like all this past summer like I thought about it every day like mm -hmm. where I'm gonna go if I'm gonna like go here or if like balancing out my options like every single day and so that was really stressful the recruiting process is really stressful but now that I have it all out of the way I don't have to write any more essays or talk to any more coaches or apply anywhere else and it's all done so now I'm relieved. Okay. What's your advice for upcoming seniors in your position that are like really really good at a sport and like are being recruited? <laughs> um, stay calm it'll happen everything will work out. Um, do the most though if you're not sure if you want to play in college yet or if you are just undecided on anything still do the most and still try and still do all the steps and just stay calm because it'll all work out. All right, thank you. College is so much more different than high school. Don't believe me? Here's the proof. We talked to recent Canfield graduates about their first year at YSU. Okay, I can't even hear Don't take any 8 a.m. classes. Because, oh my God. I mean, I haven't missed one yet, but hey, the struggle is real. Like, 8 a.m. in college is a whole different game. Than like, 8 in high all school. of high school, you say, like, okay, I did this in high school. You know, yeah. I used to go to school at 745. It's cool. But college, like, you wake up at 8 a.m. and it's like just this pile of bricks is falling on you. And you're like, uh, Because you're like, I don't have to go. Like, I mean, no way. Um, apply for colleges early because the more options you have, the easier. Later on. And apply for scholarships on time. What I learned is um, if you keep going, it's a lot easier. All right, You study, you do your homework, it's great. Honestly, it's great. And if you keep a consistent pace, you'll, you won't fail. It's great. If you miss a class, though, um, it's, like, it's like a disease and you will not stop. It is very hard to not miss a class. Oh, there's more penalties for missing a class. My best advice for the senior class is... Um, Number one, learn how to study uh, because college is a whole different game. Like it, the classes are harder. Uh, you're gonna find that you're spending more time doing homework than you are actually in class, which is totally different from high school, regardless of if you took AP or not. And then, uh, you know, honestly, just learn how to socialize with people because you're gonna make a lot of new friends. It's a great experience. For real though, just make the most out of your senior year. Like I know I said I never miss high school, but like I, I do miss some parts of it. I wish I had known how hard time management actually is because like in high school you were like oh yeah like homework that's gonna take me 10 minutes no here it takes you like I don't know like two hours because like for every credit hour you take you have to like study a certain amount of time outside of your classes so I took 16 and that roughly translates to I have to spend 32 hours outside of classes studying to get better at time management because if you come in here and you're just like, oh, class is over, I don't have to do anything, that's not good, because it sneaks up on you really fast, and then it's the night before, and you're scrambling to do a five-page essay with no sources done. So just, like, know what you have to do and make sure to, like, allocate time for all of it, like, throughout the week, and not just, like, you know, one day. 
and coupled with like 20 hour work weeks I have at my job that was really hard so just knowing like what I have to do and I'm getting better like each week I'm managing but just know it's really really difficult it's really rough but it's gonna be fun you're gonna have fun <laughs> college is great I get coffee all the time and you will too <laughs> I was so sorry.